so we talked about prophets and teachers. Listen, we're going to move on to this second point right quick. Uh, and, and the second point is entitled Barnabas et al. Et al. And it's short for uh, et talia, which is the Latin for Barnabas and others. And so we're going to start on this point this morning. Amen. And uh, I'm going to put myself on a little time limit. First lady watch it. Amen. Throw something at me when it's time. Amen. And we're going we gonna to stop it. Amen. At a, at a, at a good time. And so, uh, so here we go. We want to talk about this second point, Barnabas and others. And uh, as we look at this, we're pulling it from verse 1. Go ahead and look at verse 1. With me, the Bible says, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas, Simon, that is called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. God bless you. That was a sneeze. Hallelujah. So we saw, y'all, that there were prophets and teachers in Antioch. The Bible is going to kind of enlarge upon that and show us who the prophets and teachers were. The Bible is going to give us the names of these prophets and teachers, and they are listed here in verse 1. What you need to understand is that they are listed in order of importance. Amen. They are listed in order of importance. So as you, as you see it, we have Barnabas listed first, amen, because he's the one that the apostles sent to kind of uh, help, amen, plan and develop this church. And so he's the most important at the church at Antioch at this particular point, save Yahshua Jesus. And so he's the head elder over there. He's the senior pastor over there, senior prophet is Barnabas. And what you don't see is that Saul is last. Amen. Saul is last. Because at this moment, Saul, or as we would call Paul, is the least amongst the prophets and teachers in the church of Antioch. Remember, he's, he's just getting saved. He, they just went get him. Uh, uh, Barnabas just went get him to help out. Amen. So, so he, he's the least important elder, but nonetheless, he's a prophet and a teacher as well. Hallelujah. Now, there's no reason for us to talk extensively of Barnabas and Saul because y'all already know him. We already went through uh, the biography of both Barnabas and Saul. Rem remember, Barnabas was a Levite Hebrew from Cyprus. He had got saved. He was the one that gave all the land the church, if y'all remember, amen, uh, that Ananias and Sapphira tried to mimic, amen, uh, uh, through some, uh, some diabolical means, but, but Barnabas was the one who gave the land first to church. He rose up to be a leader and was sent by the apostles to help develop this Antioch church. Saul, or as we would call Paul, is from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. His background, his pedigree is a Pharisee, but Paul was a persecutor of the church. He was killing Christians. He was sending them to jail. Amen. Y'all remember his story? Until he got on a road. What road he got on, y'all? The Damascus Road. And the Lord knocked him off his high horse. Blinded him for a few days. And, 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 and Paul got saved. Scales fell off his eyes. And he began right away to preach Yahshua Jesus. Amen. And that's Paul. Well, hallelujah. That's Barnabas and Paul. And, 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 and Paul is brought in to help in the work at Antioch. But this morning, I want to start talking about the three other names we have in verse 1. Amen. The three names we don't normally talk about them is Simeon, Lucius, and Manaen. And it's important that we talk about them because they got a story. And they can teach us something as we look at their lives. I want to start with the first one, Simeon. Somebody say Simeon. Simeon. All right. Now, Simeon is a Hebrew name. Is a Hebrew name. All right. And what you're going to find is, is that back in the day, Gentiles didn't name their children Hebrew names. Hebrews named their children Gentile names. All right. So 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 you'll find people like Mark and stuff like that. They, they kind of named their children after the Gentiles and they still doing that to this day. If, if you want to know the truth. Amen. You don't find amen. Too many of them naming their children. Shamika and all this other stuff, but we naming our children Hunter and you know, you know, so some things don't change What I'm just getting you ready. It's gonna be a racial sermon. I'm just getting you ready 
all right? Not racist, racial. All right, that's a big difference, okay? Because the Bible is, is telling us some things as we talk about these people. When you look at the words attached to their name, they're trying to tell us something. Okay, okay, let's, let's keep going. So, so Simeon is, is Hebrew, and he's 100% Hebrew because he has a Hebrew name, Simeon. If you know your Bible, amen, we have many people in our Bible named Simeon, all right? If you remember, one of the sons of Jacob was named Simeon. Uh, if you remember, uh, the one who waited for Jesus in the temple with Anna, amen, the, uh, uh, the prophet Simeon, he, he, he was a, his name was Simeon, amen? And then we have uh, Peter himself. We call him Simon Peter, but that's just a derivative of Simeon. His name is Simeon, uh, and, but, but they just changed it to Cephas, which we would call Peter. So this Simeon is a, is a Hebrew name. Now, I want you to look at the verse again. It says, Simeon, that was called Niger. Niger. What an interesting word, huh? This Niger. Huh? Niger. Somebody say Niger. Niger. All right. Niger in the Greek means black. Means black. So they call him black. <laughs> it, you know, and that's what they're saying. The Bible saying Simeon, look what it says. Simeon that was called black. And so when they saw him around, they said, What's up, black? <laughs> now, how many people know people that's called black? Now, how many people in here call black? John, come up to the come up to the corner, John. Come up. John, just let me introduce introduce y'all to Simeon. Simeon, what's up, black? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You you may be seated. Good job, good job. Listen, Simeon was called black man. You see, choo choo. That's my big brother. What we call you? What we used to call you? Black boy. <laughs> so Simeon was a Hebrew who was called black. All right? And this is very important because we miss the cues in our Bible telling us the color of our Bible, telling us the color of the characters in the story. We, we miss these things. We read right over them. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know. And for those that's here this morning, I never preached about this in a long time. But you're here. I'm here. And the Bible got me on Simeon Black. All right? And so, so, hallelujah, when they called him Black here, they was not talking about the color of his hair. They was not talking about the color of his eyes. But this Hebrew that they called Black, they called him Black because of the color of his skin. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. All right, all right. But this is not odd for us. We know that the original Hebrews were people of color. We understand that. We know that now. You see? And for those that's new here, amen, I just want to help you out a little bit so you can understand where we're coming from. Amen. And not think that we're crazy or that we're heretics because we're not. We still believe in the cross. We still believe in the blood. There's no difference between you thinking he white and we thinking we black. There's no difference in that. Because we still believe in the same person of Yahshua Jesus. Anybody hear me up in here? So I didn't get mad when you thought he was white. Don't get mad if I'm thinking he black. I mean, it just... All right. So, so, Pastor, how do you know that this Simon, who was called black, who was a Hebrew, was actually black? All right? Because the Hebrews was, or oh, still is, black. That's how you know the Hebrews were black. Well, because Egypt was black. Egypt was black. All right? We're living in a world that's pretty diabolical. They make the truth a lie and a lie the truth. They're able to hide some things and change some things. And 
You know, because we perish for a lack of knowledge, we just, we just, we just, we just let it roll like that. But the fact of the matter is, is that Egypt was black. Now, we know that Egypt was black, amen, because of these pics, the artifacts, amen. Look at the nose on that boy. I, I said, brother. I said, brother. I said, brother, when we look at where Egypt is and we look at the climate, we look at the, the heat, the desert, amen, Egypt early on was black. Amen. And they come into a revelation of that. Flip to the next side. They come into a revelation of that. Slowly. Because you can't hide the truth. In fact, the Bible dictionaries and encyclopedias now are beginning to scribe, describe the original Hebrews as dark-skinned people. All right? But, but wait. Just, just stop right there. You see that sphinx? They blew the nose off that sphinx. And they blew part his lips off of that. You see what I'm saying? They blew that nose off because they were trying to hide something. And you had to blow the top lip off because his top lip was big, so they blew his top lip off. <laughs> but you could still see his lip. Now look at that picture and look at Coco. Look at that picture and look at Coco. Somebody say Egypt. Egypt. But the problem is, is that when you dig deep enough, you can find original pictures of the Sphinx before the nose is blown off. This is one of the drawings. You see that nose? You say, Pastor Witt, I can't see it good. That's right. Because it was flat. You see them lips? Oh, yeah, boo. Black. 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 They blew it off. They blew it off because it was black. And not only do we have pics, but we have writings. Vivant Denon in 1798, he writes, though its proportions are colossal, talking about the Sphinx, the outline is pure and graceful. The expression of his head is mild, gracious, tranquil, but the character is African. The mouth and lips, which are thick. You understand what I'm saying? Who got thick lips up in here? Just stand up if you, no, I'm joking. You see, and we can stop right at, but 1787, another one, because the word is confirmed by two witnesses, Constantine de Volnay, a French nobleman, philosopher, and historian, look what he says. He says, all the Egyptians have a bloated face. Now, some of y'all been called fat face all your life. <laughs> Have a bloated face. Watch this. Puffed up eyes. Look, watch this. Flat nose, thick lips. Now, he's a Frenchman, all right? And he's talking about the current Egyptians in that 1787 day. And he's saying that the current Egyptians look like mulattoes. That's what he's saying. Look like black people that's been mixed. In 1787, that's what he was saying. Now watch this. He says, I was tempted to attribute it to the climate, but when I visited the Sphinx, its appearance gave me the key to the riddle. On seeing that head, somebody say that head. That you know, black people got a certain head there. <laughs> got a certain kind of head. I ain't caught, Carl, I ain't talking about nobody head up in here. <laughs> but black people got a certain type of head. Deli, come see Deli. All right, listen. He said, when I saw that head, watch this. Watch this. Where I'm at, I'm excited. <laughs> On seeing that head, look how he described the Sphinx head. Now, he, in, he a Frenchman. He said, a head looked typically Negro in all of his features. I remember the remarkable, remarkable passage of Herodotus who said, when describing the Egyptians, he says, for me, I judged the uh, call." called Kians to be a colony of the Egyptians. Look how he described the Egyptians. Because like them, they were black with... Y'all know what woolly hair looked like? <laughs> 
See this fella, he go on to talk about the Egyptians. And he, and he talk about how, now he don't know the difference between the Egyptians and the Negroes because they kind of look alike, all right? And that's why we're talking about Egypt, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there in a second. I'm going to get there in a second. But he don't know the difference between the Negroes and the Africans. You see, us, we know the difference between black and African. We, we, we know the difference real fast. All right? But not him. But he's saying that they look Negro. They look, they look black. They, he go on to say, in other words, the ancient Egyptians were true Negroes. No, but that's not the truth because Egypt come from, 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 from Cush and Miserine. Amen. We come from Shem, but, but that's a cultural thing. It's hard to tell the difference when you're looking at a culture and you're not part of that culture. Y'all know what I'm saying nicely. All right. All right, all right, all right. He said they're, they're the same type as all native-born Africans. That being so, we can see how their blood mixed for several centuries. With that of the Greeks, the Romans, must have lost the intensity of its original color while retaining, nonetheless, the imprint of the original mold. He's saying, I'm looking at the current Egyptians with their nose and their lips in 1787, and I look at the Sphinx, and he said, I see they look alike, but because of the mixing with the Greeks and the Romans, which was an intentional thing, the skin color is lighter, but they still got the imprint of being originally Egyptian. Anybody hear me up in here? Isn't that deep? I don't know. I just, maybe, maybe it was the sun God told me yesterday. But watch this. I just want to read you something else. He says, just think that this race of black men today are our slaves and subject of our scorn. He's talking about Egypt. He says, the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even our speech. Just imagine, finally, that it is in the midst of, of people who call themselves the greatest friends of liberty and humanity that one has approved the most barbarous slavery and questions whether black men have the same kind of intelligence as whites. You hear what that dude say? He said, we owe to that part of Africa our arts and our sciences, but we bring them here and question if they got the same type of intelligence as us. That's what the, this, this, is a real, this is a real white dude right here, man. You see? It's a real white dude right here. So that's the Egyptians. And he get a little confused between Negro and, and Egyptian. He get a little confused. But Pastor, why you bring up Egypt when we talk about the Hebrews being black? The reason I bring up Egypt is because not just with these French historians and philosophers, our people, the descendants of Shem, the Hebrews, we were always confused with the Egyptians. In our Bible, amen, we have stories. Look at this. Look at Exodus 2 and 19. Moses is rescuing Jethro's daughters, and they come back. You know what I'm saying? And they tell their daddy, they say, Daddy, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and drew water enough for us to water our flocks. Now, why would they think Moses was an Egyptian? If Egyptians got a wide nose and thick lips, how in the world they would think Moses was an Egyptian if the Hebrews look like the current Jews like they saying of the fair complected skin? It could never happen. Are you with me here so far? We talking about Simon, a.k.a. black. All right? Black by nickname, but black because of Hebrew. Song of Solomon 1 and 5, we got a really colorful book that we ain't been seeing the colors. We the only ones colorblind in the world today. Song of Solomon 1 5, the Shunammite woman describes herself. Shunammite was a woman from Shunam, one of the ten, 12 tribes of Israel. Look, look what she say. I am black, but comely. That's where they get them perms from. <laughs> Anybody know them perm name? Dark and lovely, baby. That's what, you, and, and, and it's right in our face. 
she's describing herself. This, this Israelite woman is describing herself. She said, I am dark and lovely. I'm dark, yeah, but I'm beautiful. How many dark and beautiful people we got up in here? <laughs> Let me keep on moving. I'm talking about Simon. The Niger. You see? In Job 30, 30, look what Job described himself as. He said, my skin is black upon me. My skin is black upon me. And my bones are burned with heat. I felt that way in Arsenal Park yesterday. <laughs> I'm standing out there in Santa Fe. I said, oof, my skin is black upon me. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? But you say, man, you say, man, but wait now, wait, you know. It, it just could be a descriptive term, but let's see, let's see. Lamentations 5.10, Jeremiah say, our skin was black like an... Now wait now, you ever open your oven? You open your oven? You open your oven? You, you, you see how black your oven is? See, I think of an old black pot. You know them black pots you cook in? That's them boys saying, they say my skin was black like that. There's no mistake, no, y'all. There's no mistake. We're the only ones going to our Bible and wasn't seeing color. And now that we find out the truth, they say, but why are you talking about it? What does it matter? Well, why did it matter when you painted him that way? What, what, why, why? And if it don't matter, what you tripping on me for? You know what I'm saying? Like, if it don't matter, then it don't matter. But it does matter. But it does matter. But it does matter. All right? When we look at Revelations 1, 14 and 15, Jesus describing himself. We're talking about Simon. Simon called Niger. Simon called black. Revelations talks about Jesus' hair was white as wool. The wool is not to describe the color. The wool is to describe the texture. The texture. And y'all ladies know they got different texture of hair now. When y'all go to buy that, purchase that, they got all kind of hair that you can buy. Come out there, you can buy that Brazilian, that Peruvian, or you can go, what they call that, baby? With, with, kinky, 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 kinky. Buy that kinky. I like that kinky myself. Somebody say, hair like wool. Well, Pastor, how do you know that the wool is not describing the color? Because the next phrase is going to describe the color. The wool is the texture. The next phrase is the color. It says that it's as white as snow. That's the color of it. The wool is the texture. The Bible is not being redundant. You see? His eyes were a flame of fire, 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. Y'all saw brass lately? Y'all saw brass lately? You know what I'm saying? I didn't put a picture of brass up, but y'all saw brass lately? He said his feet was like bread. Kendrick, come see. <laughs> Take off your shoes, Kendrick. <laughs> feet like brass. Feet like brass. Feet like brass. Bronze, bronze, bronze. You too, Harvey, you too. I'm talking about Simeon. Simeon also called black. But we see in the Assyrian reliefs when they first got the Hebrews, when Assyria, amen, invaded and took the ten tribes, amen, they painted the ten tribes, not painted them, but they carved it out in the reliefs. And we still have the reliefs of what the original Hebrews looked like when the Assyrians came get them, Amen. And I'm going to show you that. Amen. You see them dreads up in there? <laughs> see that hat? Somebody say kinky. That's the original Hebrews, man, when they came get them from Assyria. I'm looking for my glass there in my hand. <laughs> when you see them beady beads in that beard like that, <laughs> the boss still twisting their hair like that. I see you. But you see, what, 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 was, what was is going to be again. 
<laughs> There's a movement, an independent operation that's happening in our people all over. Returning back to our first love, returning back to the way we used to be, returning back to being leaders, returning back to being scholars, returning back, amen, to, to, to eating clean and eating healthy, returning back to, to, to the natural way of things, returning back to liking the way we look, Return, just returning back to it, amen. And it's a part of the outworkings of the biblical dispensation of God. Remember, I told you 1 through 12 was about the Hebrews and the Hebrew church. But there will be a time when because we rejected our Messiah, that the Gentiles would be allowed in. But Paul said that this would happen until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Paul said, have we cast away my people Israel forever? Paul said, God forbid, because when the fullness come in, amen, God's going to turn his attention back to his people. He's going to turn his attention back to his people. And he told us in Romans, he said, if the casting away of his people be the salvation of the rest of the nations of the world, then what shall be their restoral? God is saying, if you think that the world saw something yet, you think the world was blessed when I cast them away, you ain't seen nothing yet, because when I restore them, it's going to be a whole nother thing. Listen to me. There's an open heaven right now. And if you can't see it, then you ain't looking. If you don't feel it within yourself, then you, you ain't searching. That, that's, mm, God. Uh. Somebody say Simon. Simon. Niger. Now, you know that word Niger is close to another word. I hate to bring it up, but I'm here. Let me see my phone. Print. That word Niger is so close to another word. But when you look at that word Niger in the Hebrew, amen, the, the, or in the Greek, the word Niger in the Greek is actually pronounced. Brian, let me bring your microphone. You going to say it? You, I know you would say it. I wonder if they've been calling us Niger all this time. We got a little more time. Who want to move on to Lucius? You want to move on to Lucius? Let's move on to Lucius. We got a little more time. We, it's still early. Let's move on to Lucius. You can catch the game. You say, Pastor, but I don't know. The Simon is good. We could, Lucius going to be good, too. Somebody say Lucius. Lucius. Coming from verse 1. And we're going to stop on Lucius. God spell life. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets, teachers, Barnabas, we know, Simeon, now we know, and that was called Niger. We understand what that means now. Amen. Amen. This is so good. To the place to where when we fled Israel, where we settled in Negro land, Northwest Africa, you know what that river was called? The Niger River. Oh, come on, man. Got a country around that called Nigeria. Listen. Y'all don't. <laughs> man, they ain't studying, man. Come on, let's talk. Somebody say Lucius. Lucius. All right, all right, all right. So, so Lucius is a Greek name. Now, I told you that, you know, we name our children, Hebrew, named our children Hebrew names and Greek names back then. In fact, a lot of times they would have two names, a Hebrew name and a Greek name. And, and it was just so that we could move and operate amongst the Greeks. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, so that's why you had John Mark. You see what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Simeon and, and Cephas. You see, it just, just the way it was. We know when other nationalities come to America, amen, they, you shake their hand and be, what's your name? My name is Harry. You know that ain't that boy's name. But, but, but he... he, he he got an English name so he could move around better 
You know what I'm saying? He don't want you to call him you got John. You know all that. You, you see what I'm saying? But he said his name is Harry. So that's how that's how we did. We we had a we had a Greek name and we had a Hebrew name. You know what I'm saying? And so that that's the way it was. And, and both of them are legitimately the name. And that's why I don't have a problem calling Jesus Jesus and Yahshua because it's one and the same. You understand what I'm saying? Because they would have a Greek name and a, and a Hebrew name. All right? Let's, let's continue. Let's talk about Lucius. Now, so Lucius is a Greek name that means light. Amen. And, and another derivative of that name, Lucius, is the, is, the, is the English name Luke. Somebody say Luke. All right? And so you got all kinds. You got Lucius, Lucas. All of that is, is Luke. All right? All that is Luke, and it means light. All right? And, and this is interesting because, amen, Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke, and he also wrote the book of Acts, all right? And there's some Bible commentators that say that this Luke right here is the Luke that pins the book of Acts and the Gospel of Luke. This is important. This is important. This is important. See, because if that is this loop that we're talking about, you know, this is another proof positive that the Hebrew was people of color. You say, how you know that, Pastor? Well, they tell us where this Luke is from. They say Luke of, what they say? Cyrene. All right? Now, anybody been to Cyrene before? It's right when you pass Truman. You pass Truman. <laughs> I'm just making sure y'all up. I'm just making sure y'all up. Because I'm, I'm talking all of this historical stuff. Y'all, listen. Y'all up? It was hot out there yesterday, man. Cho, Cho, you up, man? All right, all right, all right. Cyrene. Okay, so, so Cyrene, amen. No, it's not in Visa. It's not in Macomb. But Cyrene is in northern Africa. All right, it's in northern Africa. Amen. It, it, it's exactly where Libya used to be, where, where Libya is. Come on, let me show you. Let me show. All right, that's Cyrene. You see Lib Libya? That's Cyrene. It's right there. We heard it in the news when they were talking about Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. Cyrene was right next door to Benghazi, heading east. That's in Libya. You got another pic for me, Sambu? All right. Now, I want to show you how close Libya is to Egypt. I just told you that Egypt was black. Egypt was black. Egypt was black, black. They called themselves Kemet in Egypt, which meant black. Now, I want to show you how close Egypt is to Libya and how close Egypt is to Israel. You see how that's all one little? Do you see it there? That's all one neighborhood. That's all one neighborhood. It's all one kind of people living in that area of the world during that time. That group of people are people whose skin could take that desert, can take that heat. And people say they was the ones building the pyramids and slavery in Egypt. Man, stop tripping, boy. Somebody say Libya. Go ahead, slow, show me another slide. Libya can be split up into three. Cyrenica. That's what they used to call that eastern part of Libya. When we say Cyrene, Lucas, Lucius was from Cyrene. He was from, he was from Libya. And that makes Lucas black. Because Libya was black back then. He said, Pastor, how you know that? But let me, let me take my time, man. Sola Scriptura means you use the Bible to explain the Bible. And we got, a, we got somebody else in the Bible from Cyrene that we know real well. Somebody that even all the modern commentators and the modern Bible scholars all agree that he was black. Or anybody hearing me up in here? See, in Mark 
1521, we told about a man by the name of Simon. You see, I told you it was a Hebrew name. They, they're all over the place, Simon and Simeon. The Bible says, and they compelled one Simon, where he was from? A Cyrenian. He was from Cyrene, who passed by, coming out the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus. What did they compel him to do? To bear the cross of Jesus. Y'all remember when Jesus couldn't carry a cross? Y'all remember that? They had another man from Cyrene who was there. Well, what was he doing there? He was coming to worship. It was Passover. What you don't know about Cyrene is that they had a large population of Hebrews in Cyrene who made the pilgrimage to celebrate Passover in Jerusalem. And this Simon was there, a Hebrew, coming to celebrate. Now he done got himself all ceremonial clean and he gone out there to see the temple and everything like that. And while he walking into the city, amen, they walking out the city with Yahshua carrying his cross. And Yahshua chose not to carry it any further. But he went down. Boom. Now you got to understand this is the God man. He could have not only carried that cross, but float that cross up that hill if he wanted to. He could have tell that cross, cross, you get up and walk. That cross would have gone. <laughs> but he went down right there. He went down. Boom. And he looked up and he saw a brother. Saw a brother there. Saw a brother from Cyrene. And the Roman grabbed the brother and he said, pick up that cross. And that brother got down there. He picked up the cross for Jesus. Big old burden bearer brother. Come on, man. Show them all what that looked like, man. Come on, man. See, big old brother like that. Put that cross on that brother like that. And him and Jesus just moved, walking out, carrying that cross. Just walking out, carrying that cross. That's the way that looked like. That's the way that looked like. Woolly had everything. Jesus carrying that cross with that brother from Cyrene. Listen, man. It got so deep. Jesus was so intentional in that exchange right there. That in Mark, we not only know that that event touched Simeon, but it touched the children of Simeon. Mark said, yeah, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know Simon, y'all know, and I'm using the names interchangeable because they mean the same thing. Y'all know Simon, who carried the cross of Jesus? His sons, Alexander and Rufus. See, Bible historians and commentators say that Simon got saved with that event with Jesus. He got saved. He got saved. And he not only got saved, but he brought the gospel home. You understand what I said? Went back to Cyrene with the gospel. And said, told his family, look, I got to tell y'all something. And his sons Alexander and Rufus get saved. Come on, give God some glory, amen. Now, now, back to the point. Now, they all know that, that Simon was a brother young. They all know that. When they depict him in the modern movies, he's always played most of the time by a black man. Because of where he's from. Cyrene, the population was black then, man. You understand what I'm saying? And even, go ahead, flip again, flip again. They got a statue of him in Huntsville, Alabama. You understand what I'm saying? And guess what that's that? Look, that, that's a brother. Look at that hat. Look at that hat. Look at that hat. Oh, yeah. Even the Catholic Church, when they made a saint out of him, look at that. Oh, that's an afro, baby. That's how cool used to look when he had it. <laughs> we working on them implants, man, but it's just not. <laughs> Pastor, why are you talking about Simon? You know, why are you talking about Simon like that? Simon was from Cyrene. Cyrene had a large population of Hebrews that was there. Loving the Lord. And they were people of color. You see? And what you need to know when they say Lucius, Lucius of Cyrene, all right, that this was a brother too. It was a brother too. The same way they took the Bible and say, well, this Simon who carried, Simeon who carried the cross for Jesus, this Simon who carried the cross for Jesus from Cyrene, he must have been black. The same logic I'm using. 
to say Lucius from the same place must have been black too. Come on, give God some glory. All right, now watch this. Watch this, it, it get deeper. Now what the church did, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop at this point now. What the church did, oh, it's early though. What, what the church did, It's early, man. Y'all don't come here and not have it like have a half a church. Listen, what, what the church did, man, the church, you know, Christendom, they immediately labeled Luke, the author of the book of Acts, writer of the book of Acts and the Gospels. They immediately labeled him a Gentile, for those who don't know. They say, our whole Bible has been written by the Hebrews. We, we have all Hebrew authors, all Hebrew writers, because God is the author of Scripture. We have all Hebrew writers except Luke. You know, if you haven't heard that, that's, that's a seminary thing. That's a, a Bible scholar thing. Luke has always been thought of as a Gentile. And I believe that that was done purposely to throw us off. See, because if you think he a Gentile and you find out he from Cyrene, then it's just a black Gentile. That was a part of the early church. But if you know he a Hebrew and you find out he from, uh, from Cyrene, it's not he just a black Gentile. No, he a black Hebrew. And that must mean that the Hebrews are black. So you, so you hide that. You say, no, Luke wasn't a Hebrew. Luke, wasn't, Luke was a Gentile. And the problem is, Mark, watch this. Nowhere in our Bible do we have proof of Luke being a Gentile. Nowhere. Nowhere. I don't see where they get that from. That the writer of Luke and Acts is a Gentile. Where do you get that from? In fact, our Bible teaches us Otherwise, in the book of Acts, we see Luke going in the temple with Paul. Well, Pastor, what's the big deal about that? Gentiles could not go in the temple. <laughs> Luke was in the temple, man. Luke, that's why Luke describing stuff, amen, in that. Luke is specific. Luke is specific when in his gospel, Luke is talking about when the angel came to John the Baptist's daddy when he was in the temple. Luke tell you where he was standing at in the temple. Luke, you done been in there before, Luke. In a minute, he was standing right by the pole, right by, right by Big A. He was standing right by. I'm just making sure y'all up. This is real technical stuff. They say, no, 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 but Paul brought Gentiles in the temple. Paul ain't brought no Gentiles in the temple. When they accused Paul of bringing Gentiles in the temple, Paul said, man, I've been here just a couple of days. These people done stone, trying to stone me, trying to kill me. I ain't brought no Gentiles in the temple, amen. And even when they accused Paul of bringing the Gentiles in the temple, it was not Luke. They was accusing him of bringing Trophimus into the temple. It wasn't Luke. They didn't have a problem with Luke going to the temple because Luke wasn't a Gentile. Ooh! <laughs> Man, I'm telling you the truth, man. I'm telling you the truth. So, Pastor, what you talking about? Lucius right here in this scripture is from Cyrene. It's like Simon, who is called Niger, a.k.a. Black. There's another brother right here. There's another brother right here from Libya. Northeast Libya, Cyrene. All right? And that's a brother, too. Now, now you see, I still got a little bit of time, so let's cover C2. I mean, we here. The saints ain't playing tough tomorrow. So let's just keep going. I, I, my wife ain't giving a signal. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm doing good today. Let's go to point number letter C. Manayin. Somebody say manayin. 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 It's coming out of verse 1 again. This is our shortest point. 
Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. You see? Manaen, amen, is a name that means comfort. Amen. It's a Hebrew name. So we believe in that this one is a Hebrew as well. All right? It means comfort. He was one of the teachers and prophets at Antioch. The Bible says here, which is important, we not, it's not going to be racial at this point because the Manaim is, 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 is a Hebrew name. That's, that's self-explanatory. But the important thing to catch here in relation to our story is that he was brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch. The Herod that we're talking about right here is the one that was just killed by the angel. Remember the one that, that, that the uh, uh, Caesareans were saying, the voice of a God, the voice of a God, all that, and he didn't give God the glory. And the Bible says he was eating the worms and stuff like that. This is, the, this is the Herod the Tetrarch that they're talking about. They say he was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. All right? What this means, amen, theologically, and if you're looking at it in a modern version, amen, he was the foster brother of Herod the Tetrarch. They were brought up in the same household. They was brought up like brothers. Manaen, amen, was for all practical purpose, purposes raised like a prince because he was brought up in the house of Herod the Great. Are you with me here so far? Herod the Great, amen, is, is, is the one, hallelujah, who, 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 who was cutting up during the days of Jesus. Anybody remember that story? Killing the children and everything, Amen. Is the, Herod, it was, is the Herod family, all right? And so he was raised with, with Herod the Tetrarch. He was the, the foster brother. Manaen, like Moses, amen, was, uh, was brought up like a prince, you see, just like Moses. He was raised in the palace. Now, Josephus, in his book, The Antiquities of the Hebrews, book 15, chapter 10, paragraph 5, just so that you can know I'm not making it up. Talks about another Manaim. All right? Y'all don't have to read that. Take that off before we hurt our eyes right here. Amen? <laughs> but what this paragraph is saying from Josephus' Antiquities, it said that there was a prophet named Manaim. And he walked to Herod the Great and he prophesied to Herod the Great. Jen? And he told Herod the Great, who was poor at that time, didn't have no prospects at that time, he told Herod the Great, you're going to be king over the Hebrews. That's what he told Herod the Great. You're going to be the king of the Jews. Herod the Great laughed at him. But as time would pass, Herod became king. So he called back the man, Manaen, back to him. It was an old man at this time. All right? And it, it, tradition holds that the old man, Herod wanted to do the old man a favor for a prophesying to him. The old man let Herod, Herod let the old man's son be raised in the palace for prophesying. You see, the old man's name was Manaim. His son was named Manaim. All right? Not too hard to understand. My name is Omar. My son's name is Omar. You understand what I'm saying? Very easy, very easy. Okay? So this Manaen is not the prophet who prophesied over Herod the Great, but most probably his son, named after him, who grew up in the palace as a return favor to Herod for Herod's uh, uh, prophecy of being king. This Manaen, amen, being raised in all of the wealth, the luxury, the opulence and the society of Herod the Great. But something happened to Manaim. Huh? Something happened. What happened, Pastor? He got saved. He got saved. So we see him numbered amongst the prophets and the teachers in the church of Antioch. We see him go from prince to preacher. All in one moment. Anybody hear me up in here? Amen? <laughs> Woo! But Proverbs 22.6, 22, 6, Annalise's favorite scripture. 
You train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they're not going to depart from it. You got to understand, that prophet probably raised that boy to be something. And that boy grew up in that palace. That boy grew up in that palace. Could you imagine being in the palace of Herod? Everything going up in there. All right? It's the same one, amen, who, who married his brother Philip's wife, and then the daughter was dancing, and then he, he said, I give you half my kingdom because she danced so good in front of him. And that's when he killed John the Baptist. Manaim was raised in that house. I can imagine the sins that was going on in that house. Anybody hear me up there? But this Manaim, amen, he... He remembered the old paths. I'm sure he made his mistakes along the way. But how many people know you can't run too long or too far from the most high God? Come on, give God some glory, huh? I'm winding down. Carlos, you can come on up. Listen, it was money in that palace. But money couldn't satisfy the emptiness that was in Manaim. It was money in that palace. He could have been in any position, any position that he wanted to be in. Amen. It was not only money in that palace, but watch this. It was pleasure in that palace. I'm sure he could have whoever he wanted to have. Huh? Money in that palace, pleasure in that palace, fame. But anybody that done had a little money, Anybody that done had a little fame, anybody who done experienced a little pleasure, a little luxury, a little opulence, you know, you know that the emptiness still remains. Ooh. <laughs> so Manayin had an encounter with Yahshua Jesus. Huh? Wound up getting saved. I wonder who in here this morning, huh? You done had the wealth. You done had the cars, the clothes, and houses and the lands. You like my Nain. He was raised in a palace. But it's still something missing. You done been popular. That was my thing. Going through college and the fraternities, going to all the parties, amen, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in my apartment alone, in my room, I know that there's got to be more than this. Something's still not right. Something's still not right. <laughs> Something's still not right. Them boys looking at me, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You ain't having a good time? Something's still not right. Something's still not right. Like Minister Anthony testimony, amen. In club strawberries, everything he want right there. But something's still not right. Something's still not right. Something still just don't feel right on the inside. Some of y'all, amen, got all the drink you want. Got all the drug you want. Can make all the money that you want, amen. You as high as a kite, but you even still high. You tell yourself, something still ain't right. Something still ain't right. So that's my naive. That's my naive. Listen. Listen, something ain't right. The Bible says God has set eternity in the heart of man. And if you want to hear his, he ain't going to never, ever give you peace. You always going to have the question, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. In my little apartment, man, I got on my knees. All my other brothers going out somewhere, going through something. I got on my knees down there. I said, God, if you up there, I want to know you. And I want to work for you. And I, listen, I, I, listen, take my life. Take my life. Use me. Because I'm done with all this stuff. Next time they see me on UL campus, I'm handing out flyers for a Bible study. The boy say, Omar, what's wrong with you? Nothing wrong with me. I'm right. 
I'm right. I've been washing the blood. I'm right. I ain't felt this amount of peace in my life. I'm right. I've been running for a long time, a long time. Woo! But I'm home. But I'm home. From a prince to a preacher. Manayin. 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 Listen, we're going to have all to come. And if you're here and you have that in your heart, there's got to be more. You're going to them same old places, seeing the same old faces. There's got to be more. Taking the same old drink and the same old drug, there's got to be more. Oh, where Brian is when you need him. Where Brian is when you need him. Listen, listen, listen. You, 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 that's your testimony right now. You done came to the right place this morning. You done came to the right place this morning. You're going to come to this altar and guess what? Hey, God, the most high, the most, you got one already? Hallelujah. Jesus. You can catch. Don't do it, Dan. Just hold that. Just hold that. Brian might need some accompaniment. Listen. You're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Hey, hey. There's got to be more. Got to be more. Women and men not going to fix this right here. Hey. <laughs> We're about to open them up. <laughs> Oh, just don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to take care of this for myself. I'm going to take care of this for myself. We're going we gonna to open this thing up. We're going to open this thing up. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey. Uh, come here. <laughs> Tyrone must have put that one on there. Hey. Got to be more. 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 Has to be more. Gotta be more, gotta be more, gotta be more, gotta be more. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey God! Listen, if you need this altar for salvation, for rededication, come on up. Come on up. There's gotta be more. Come on, somebody gotta be. Hey, gotta be, gotta be, gotta be, gotta be more than this. Come on, somebody. Gotta be more, gotta be more. Gotta be, gotta be more than this. I need you, Daddy. I need you, Lord. Gotta be, I need you, Lord. Gotta be more than this. Men, then let me down. Women, then let me down. People don't let me down, but you'll never let me down, never let me down. Gotta be more, gotta be more. Gotta be, gotta be. Gotta be more. Hey, hey, hey. Gotta be more. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Gotta be more than this. There's an emptiness that only God can fill. Only God can fill it. Only God can fill it. Gotta be more than this. You're trying to put a triangle in a circle. Gotta be more, gotta be more. And it just won't fit. It's gotta be more than this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Gotta be more, gotta be more. Gotta be, gotta be. It's gotta be more than this. Somebody say, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more, I want more than this. I want it, I want it. I want more. I want it. I want more. I want it. I want more than this. I want more. 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 Heartbreak after heartbreak. Nah, 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 nah. It's gotta be, gotta be. 
<laughs> that's got to be, that's got to be. <laughs> but he's just waiting for you to ask him. He's just waiting for you to want more. So here we go. We're going to pray in this house. And you're going to ask him for more. I want to say, God, God I, admit, I admit I've fallen short. I've made my share of mistakes, but I realize nothing can fill my life but you. So right now, I'm asking you for more, more of you in my life. I believe you died on the cross you were buried in the grave and on the third day you rose with all power and all might save me Lord forgive me Lord and use me Lord I'm ready for more more joy more peace more love more purpose. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I want more. In Jesus' name. Come on, give y'all some glory in this house. Hey. Yes, there's more. Yes, there's more. Yes, there's more. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, there's more than this. Come on, yes, there's more. Yes, there's more. Yes, there's Woo. more. Yes, there's more than this. Come on, come on. Yes, there's more. Yes, there's more. Hallelujah. Yes, there's more than this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, there's Woo. more. Yes, there's more. There's more. Yes, there's more than this. There's more. Yes, there's more. Yes, there's more. More than money. More than clothes, more than drugs, more than alcohol. There's so much more, so much more. There's more. Thank you, Jesus. There's more than this. Hey! There's more. Yes, there's more than There's more. Yes, there's more. There's more. Yes, there's more than this. Yes, there's more. Yes, there's more. Yes, there's more. Yes, there's more than this. Yes, there's more. 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 Yes, there's May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you and bless you with shalom, peace. Love y'all. Be blessed. Be blessed. Yes, there's more than